The Life and Sad Ending of Barbara Mandrell Barbara Mandrell was born Barbara Ann Mandrell on December 25, 1948, in Houston, Texas, the U.S. Her mother was a homemaker and musician hailing from rural Wayne County, Illinois. Her father Irby was a World War II naval veteran and Texas police officer from Garland County, Arkansas. Barbara has two younger sisters, Thelma Louise Mandrell and Ellen Erlene Mandrell both of them are also accomplished country music singers. She started to learn music at a very early age and even taught herself to play a steel guitar. The eldest daughter of the musical family, Barbara Mandrell was already reading music and playing accordion when her sisters were infants. Six years later, she had become so adept at playing steel guitar that her father took her to a music trade convention in Chicago. While there, her talents caught the attention of RCA Records producer and session musician Chet Atkins and popular musician and bandleader Joe Mathis. Soon after, she became a featured performer in Mathis' Las Vegas nightclub show, followed by tours with Red Foley, Tex Ritter, and Johnny Cash. Her network TV debut came on the NBC TV series Five Star Jubilee in 1961. She also learned to play other musical instruments, such as accordion, saxophone, and banjo. She toured with Patsy Cline, Johnny Cash, and George Jones at the age of 13. Discovering the talent of her little daughter, her family formed their own band, they toured across the United States and Asia. Their drummer, Ken Dudney, became Mandrell's husband shortly after she graduated from Oceanside High School. Dudney received a commission in the Navy, serving as a pilot, and was sent overseas. Mandrell decided that she would become a country singer and moved to Nashville. Her father was then her manager, and with his help, she signed with Columbia Records in 1969. Over the next few years, Mandrell had a few minor hits. Her producer at the time was Billy Sherrill, known for producing other well-known singers in country music such as Tammy Winnett, Charlie Rich, and Tanya Tucker. In 1969, she received six offers from different recording companies and signed with Columbia that year. Her first recording was a cover of Otis Redding's classic, I've Been Loving You Too Long, which became an instant hit. A year later, Mandrell scored the first of many top 40 hits with Playin' Around With Love. In the same year, she began performing with singer David Houston, and their partnership also generated considerable chart success. The big breakthrough came in 1973 when she released the single, The Midnight Oil, which earned the respect of her hometown colleagues. It was the first cheating song sung from the perspective of the woman who is doing the cheating, which at the time was unheard of. Under Cheryl's direction, Mandrell recorded country soul material, which never gained her widespread success. Her early hits included the 1970s After Closing Time and 1971's Tonight My Baby's Coming Home, Treat Him Right, and her version of Joe Tex's Show Me. Her time with Columbia Records was not very fruitful and Billy Sherrill was questioned several times about why he was still working with Barbara despite her failure to capture widespread fame. He finally ended the contract with her in 1975. After leaving Columbia Records, Barbara Mandrell signed with ABC Dot and started working with producer Tom Collins. This collaboration marked the beginning of her success. After a series of successive hits, she scored her first Billboard No. 1 with 1978's sleeping single in a double bed, immediately followed by another chart topper, If Loving You Is Wrong I Don't Want To Be Right. During the early 1980s, she had the best time of her career, delivering a series of popular hits starting with Crackers and Wish You Were Here, which reached the country's top 10. She also delivered some super hit singles like, Years, I Was Country When Country Wasn't Cool, Till You're Gone, and, One of a Kind, Pair of Fools, all during the early 1980s and quickly made her mark in the industry. Among these top hits, the single, 
I Was Country When Country Wasn't Cool, which she performed alongside George Jones, became a public favorite immediately. In 1984, she formed a very successful partnership with Lee Greenwood and a series of their popular duets from the album, Meant for Each Other, went on to top the country charts. Barbara Mandrell's rising popularity during the late 1970s and early 1980s led her to venture into television as well. The TV program, Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell Sisters premiered on NBC in 1980. Mandrell had the starring role in Burning Rage alongside Tom Wopat in 1984, just prior to her car accident. Later, she also had guest star roles on hit shows, including Touched by an Angel, Empty Nest, Diagnosis, Murder, Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, The Comish, Baywatch, Walker, Texas Ranger, and The Rockford Files. She also had a recurring role in the late 1990s on Aaron Spelling's daytime drama, Sunset Beach. Spelling was a big fan of hers and wanted to incorporate her into one of his shows. Many of these performances can be seen on late-night television or on the DVD box sets of the respective shows. In 1990, she wrote an autobiography called Get to the Heart, My Story, which was a New York Times bestseller for more than three months, and in 1997 became a highly rated CBS TV movie of the week, Get to the Heart starring Maureen McCormick as Mandrell. Mandrell promoted her autobiography on shows such as Sally Jesse Raphael, Geraldo, and The Oprah Winfrey Show, with whom she shared the Woman of the World Honor in 1992. In primetime, she appeared on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, The Lawrence Welk Show, and Ralph Emery's Nashville Now, and she even rapped during one of her three Arsenio visits. In personal life, Barbara Mandrell married Ken Dudney on May 28, 1967. Dudney had been the drummer in the Mandrell family band. Mandrell and Dudney have three children, Kenneth Matthew Dudney, Jamie Nicole Dudney, and Nathaniel Mandrell Dudney. The saddest part of her career was in 1984, while Mandrell was at the peak of her popularity, she had a major setback when she was involved in a serious automobile crash on September 11, 1984. According to Tony Reinhold in Redbook, the singer sustained multiple fractures in her right leg, including a broken thigh bone, knee, and ankle. She also suffered lacerations and abrasions and a severe concussion that caused temporary memory loss, confusion, and speech difficulties. Lucky after a year and a half of rehabilitation, she recovered and returned to recording and performing. Thank you for listening to the story about the life of Barbara Mandrell. Like and comment on your opinion in the comments section below.